Hello and welcome to another episode of the Basildon Council's official podcast. I'm your host, Ryan, and today we've changed up the setting. Uh, we're usually in one of our offices in-house, but we've actually come out to the Green Centre at Watt Tyler Country Park, uh, where we are joined by Basildon Heritage's Ken Porter and Joe Cullen. Good morning. How are you? Morning. Good morning. Good to see you. Thank you for coming on the show. <laughs> we've never done a podcast before. <laughs> No, we certainly haven't. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking before we started recording saying um, a podcast was more like a, an audio format, but we're doing, co- there's just two different types. What do we think of it? Um, yes, very odd. Um, but thank you for joining us. And uh, I'm glad to have you on for your first podcasting experience. Um, so we have changed up the setting. We've, we've come out to uh, the Green Centre, what time up, uh, where you guys have got a rather extensive collection of bits and bobs. Um, but before we get into that, I'd like to sort of find out a bit more about yourself. So I'd love to sort of get to know my guests a little bit more. Um, so if, if I could talk, Ken, uh, Joe, are we, are we local? Who are we? Tell me a bit more about yourself. <laughs> right. Um, I'm, I'm certainly local. I consider myself a Langdon boy, mm-hmm. um, born and bred in Langdon. Um, I now live in Langdon Hill, so that was due to the dear old Basin Corporation uh, comp- compulsory purchase of my parents back in the early 60s. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've only had a short spell of five years away from the borough, and that was because the corporation or the council couldn't provide any accommodation at the time, mm-hmm. uh, which was a little annoying, I have to say, but saying that, at the end of the day, it was probably the best thing. Yeah. So m- I'm more than happy to. Um, yes. So I now live in Langdon Hill. And Joe? Well, I'm afraid I'm an incomer. <laughs> I've only been here for 60 years. Six? 60. Oh, oh only. <laughs> <laughs> well, to Ken, I'm an incomer. <laughs> True. And I come from the Crystal Palace, which had such a fantastic history. And I'm afraid that's how I got into history, to, by studying the different things that had happened at the, Chris, uh, the Crystal Palace. Mm. Um, at school, it was my favourite subject. And when I came to Basildon, I had a young child. Um, couldn't really do very much for history, except read an extensive collection that used to be in the Vange Library. And I read everything they had on local history there. And I continued to do things, um, reading, uh, compiling uh, information and went on to do family history and often when you do family history it leads to local history mm. even though my family worked from here yeah um, so really that's my introduction into history I find that fascinating that we've got sort of two very different ways buzzing and being at the new town that it is and we've got people that have been born and bred and people that have moved in almost like this Amalgamation. We, we've kind of briefly spoke beforehand where, where Buzzard and sort of started. You've got all these people coming in and sort of mixing with people that are born and bred and whatnot. I find that really fascinating that we have that in, in person form. It's fantastic. Um, so in terms of like, Joe, you were mentioning how you, you've always been interested in history. I'm interested now in how, at what point did we sort of go, I'm really interested in the local area. You sort of saying that you're interested in sort of that family history, which obviously somewhere else where did we get to uh finding out a bit more about the new area that we've decided to move into and really start to get involved in that right well i've always thought of history as being yesterday not necessarily a hundred years ago yeah and i think that's very important that yesterday is our heritage is just as much as a hundred years ago yeah and so um being a newcomer coming in I didn't, uh, when I came in, know about the Plotlands and all these old houses. I did think that having come from the London area, we had indoor toilets and a bathroom. Um, (laughs) Ken will tell you more about that. Um, So it was a very different way of living than the people that were born and bred here. Mm. Even though the house that I was born and lived in had been condemned after the war. So I was living in a house that was, had been condemned for 20 years before I moved to Basildon. Wow. <laughs> when I moved to Basildon, 
fantastic. The houses were so clean and beautiful and big and we had things like fitted carpets, running hot water. <laughs> oh, it was wonderful. Um, and I only had one child, so I had a, a two-bedroom house, which was fantastic. The good thing about the new term was the fact that there was a swap system. And if you had another child, you could go down to the council offices and maybe swap with somebody who'd got a three-bedroom but only wanted a two-bedroom. Mm. And this is what we did. And I moved from the Kingswood area, where we started, into Vange. And uh, we were very happy there for nine years. And then we bought a house in Pitsy. So my life in Basildon has been in those three areas. Yeah. And that's led me in, uh, into a good place for being in Basildon Heritage because I know more about those three areas than Ken, who's always been Langdon and Langdon Hills. But he knows everything about them. Yeah. And that's what you need in a group of accounts. Mm, mm. I know, that's, that's so interesting that you're almost sort of an example of, of New Basel to Newtown working. <laughs> that, you know, it, it was this aspirational thing where people could come in and, and have a home and you say, got fitted carpets and these, like, these brand spanking new homes and, and you've been here ever since. I think that's an exa the perfect example of how the idea was and it worked. Yeah. Then coming from a, the sort of house that I was in into these, this beautiful, it was a palace to me and uh, it, everything was so clean. There wasn't bomb sites around or yeah. anything like that. It was beautiful. Mm. And, and Ken, so let's talk about these um, <laughs> indoor toilets and the lack of. <laughs> what well, a well, you're well, in. Well, I was fortunate. Um, <laughs> my parents uh, moved in in 1928 into a bungalow in Power Lane, Langdon, right opposite St Nicholas Church, actually. I think it's probably the church area has got me interested right there in front of us, mm. um, interested in history as time went on. And when I've done my own research on my own family, I found, including myself, because they're always on at me, put your memories down, Ken, which I haven't <laughs> done really. But I found that during the junior school and senior school, I was, for some unknown reason, I was always top of history. Um, but then I decided, um, why did we come to Langdon? What mm -hmm. drew my family down in Langdon? Um, and obviously asking questions around, only to establish that there was um, a big family gathering still here. And it just happened to be my little section had moved around and ended up in Greenwich. Um, and um, in fact, goes back to the 18, late 1880s, where my great-great-grandfather came down from Boxted up in Colchester. Mm -hmm. Um, and he took, for a short time, he was actually uh, Postmaster General of uh, Basildon, when Basildon was just a small village on its own. Um, so that got me interested more so in my family history. And though initially I was interested in history as a whole, you know, throughout Essex, that dragged me into local history. Just, you know, we're down here. Why did we come down and spread out from there? Uh, so that's how I got into the local history side of things. Mm. Um, uh, which, you know, I've enjoyed. In fact, I was still researching. You can carry on researching your family all the time. Yeah, it's endless, you know? isn't it? That's uh, you history. never stop. It doesn't stop. You never stop. Um, I am slowly beginning to write it down in paper because I keep getting moaned at by Val um, or Joe and some of the others. Valerie, somebody else who works for us. Um, so we'll get there one day, my days. But it's working on everything else. You know, yeah. somebody crops up. As you know, this morning, we've had two or three people in this morning, haven't we, asking questions. They want to know about their family and the farms that they worked on down here. So that then drags you away from your own stuff. But saying that, it's great. Absolutely. It really is great. You know, I, I, when, when we were setting up, yeah. um, I, was, I, could, I could hear Joe mention this out and said, well, if it's to do with Langdon, yeah. Ken, Ken's your guy. <laughs> He's your guy. He knows all about Langdon. There's nothing he doesn't know about Langdon. What I will say, though, is that when we, my parents moved down, they were fortunate. They moved into bungalows. That was in 20, 1928. Um, which did in fact have flush toilets. I know Joe mentioned <laughs> flush toilets. So we had flush toilets, gas and electricity. And my nan as well, who lived bang opposite. Um, but I did not appreciate uh, that probably 80, 90% of my friends from school on that 
lived in what we refer to as the old Plotman type buildings. Yeah. Because though the Plotmans have been going on or established back in the 1890s, there was a big push after the First World War, naturally, um, and then again later, just after the Second World War. Um, so the Twenties was quite a big area for a lot of people moving down to buildings that had been built, shacks, whatever you want to refer to them as, uh, as holiday homes initially, mm. um, but then because of the wars and everything else, because of things like Spanish flu, etc., they moved down, in theory, you know, to a healthier, um, healthier area. Mm. Um, in fact, Langdon, during the 30s, was actually referred to as a holiday resort. Seriously? Which I find a little strange, but there you are. <laughs> but people didn't think of that. So, so um, yeah. I didn't have really the experience of flush toilets or anything like that. <laughs> um, but uh, I know that a lot of my colleagues did. <laughs> so, so Basel and Heritage, tell us a little bit more about Basel and Heritage and how, how did you two get involved in it? Well, it started, um, cool, I can't remember how many years back, back when they wanted to um, uh, demolish the Basel and Swimming Pool. Mm. Iconic building that was built in the 60s. My way of it should never have been knocked down. Um, there was a gentleman still around called Vin Harrop who had been director of the uh, uh, um, Towngate Art Centre, the old building before the new one where I assume you work. <laughs> um, and he w uh, uh, got a meeting together at Towngate to discuss saving um, the uh, swimming pool for an arts, um, for arts exhibitions, etc. I contacted him and said, well, hold on, it's a rather large, isn't it? You know, but then Basel desperately, to my way of thinking, needs a museum. I said, the history of Basel, or should we say the old parishes of the borough? I'd like to refer to Basel as the borough now, not a new town. Yeah. The old parish, there's a tremendous amount of history, tremendous amount of famous people that have come from the area. Uh, so we went along and we had, had this meeting, oh, I can't remember, there must have been a hundred odd people plus there. And at the end of it, it was decided to uh, form a committee, which we did, we called it Chase, Culture, Heritage, Arts of South East Essex. I think that's correct, isn't it, Joe? Yes, that's right. Um, <laughs> so we formed ourselves there. In fact, they met at my house in Langdon Hills for a, a year or two. Gradually, the arts people all drifted off because they've all got their own things they want to do, which I've, we fully understand. We work a lot with the arts thing. And we had one person did stay with us, which was Sue Randall, who was very, very good. She became our secretary and she, and she was initially the driving force. We changed our names a couple of times, Basel Museum. Then we thought museum don't go down very well, does it? Basel Heritage, then Basel Borough Heritage. And I think probably within a year, and Joe can correct me here, that um, we obviously applied for volunteers and that. Uh, and, and you came along, didn't you, Joe? Um, probably in the first year. Sue, unfortunately, has passed on. But Joe's really taken over that role, mm. you know, and sorts all our volunteers out. I don't. No good at that. <laughs> um, Sue saw, uh, Joe sorts out what they want to do. So quite often you, I might make a mistake and say Sue instead of Joe. <laughs> Do I still remember dear old Sue? So how, how did you find it, Jo? Uh, well, I came down to Watt Tyler Park, and at that time um, there were some huts nearer the creek. And in one of the huts there was a sign in the window saying that they were a local history group and they were looking for volunteers. And I had just retired, and I thought, well, that will use some of my time. Mm. So um, I hopped on the door and went in. Well, I can't say I went in because there was so much stuff in this little shed that you couldn't actually go in. You opened the door and you could sidle round between things and eventually you'd get there <laughs> and you'd be able to sit down. But it was a very tight squeeze. And I worked, as Ken said, with Sue Randall and um, we got on very, very well. Um, we. There were all of these artifacts and filing cabinets and things in this little shed. And uh, I got really into it. I really enjoyed doing it. Um, and eventually we were offered space in the building we're in now. It didn't look like this then because it was the boat museum. Well, of course it was, yeah. And the area we were given was the foyer 
in the front of the boat museum, the one with the big porthole window in it. And we couldn't store stuff there, so we had to store stuff over in a back room. We had visitors come in, and I think for a while it was just us. And then slowly we begin to, began to get other people say, well, I'm interested, you know, can we help? And we stayed in that position for quite some time. And then they decided to make this into a green center. Now that's green meaning a way of living and making your life greener. The actual building is blue, but it's the green center. <laughs> and we were given space in the part of, that was um, the boat museum, but was now just a storage area. And it was so cold out there. We used to come down in the winter and we would put gloves on to come in. And then when it was coffee time, we'd take our coffee outside to drink our coffee. That's how cold it was. And as I say, we worked out there for a year and the council said, we'll give you an office. Well, we assumed, having looked around at what they were doing, that we would get the tiny little office, which is now our library. Mm. But no, they gave us a lovely office. And it's full, full of artifacts and books and bits of paper with a history of Basel. Mm. That's, I like that. I think it shows a, a little bit that our heritage is important. Um, for, for, your, for yourselves, how important do you think it is that other people engage with their heritage? I know for, for yourselves, it's a passion, it's a love, but for those that maybe don't know too much about it or have never really thought about it, is it important that people care about their, their heritage and their background? You know what Joe's got to say, um, I, I personally think so, um, because wherever you live, you've always got moans and groans about that area for some reason or another. In Basel, there's plenty of them. But if you, can understand your heritage and you find out about it in that area you live. I think that eases things. It makes you feel, oh, quite proud of the area. Mm. You know, I'm particularly quite proud of the Basin Borough because I'm obviously aware of a lot of the history, go, you know, go back 10,000 years if you want me to, um, on the history. And, and obviously with my family moving into it in a big way and find out well, I had such a big family group down here anyway, um, you know, all married at the local churches, either St Nicholas or Holy Cross or christened at one or the other. So, you know, I find it quite fascinating and I think it will help people, especially if they have particular problems. Um, talk about mental problems, these sort of things. But if they get into their heritage, it helps them to find out more about their family as well. Mm. Because if you start thinking about your family, then start linking into the local area. We are in contact, one of our volunteers is in contact continuously with a genealogy societies in California and, and elsewhere. But all they seem to do is to trace their family, the names, boom, 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 end of story. We've now got them saying, right, take that name. Where did the person live? What was it like there? This, that, and that. And they're finding it absolutely fascinating. Mm -hmm. And they're after us all the time. Never thought of doing it that way. So they're finding out more about their areas, mm -hmm. et cetera. You know, and it's like the number of famous people that we have found that found that lived in the in the borough. I must mention it because one of our biggest projects is trying to produce blue plaques for different individuals um, that have made a name for themselves nationally or internationally. Just take that connection with America. The first one that we got um, um, erected is on uh, Whitford Library of a Hannah Lake. Who's Hannah Lake? You know, when you look into it. The family was big, lived in that area, lived at Phantom Hall, which is, it's in the Wickford area, say, it's in one of the old parishes, I think it's the old parish of Neverton, actually. Um, who, North Benfleet. Yeah, oh, North Benfleet, yeah, you're right, North Benfleet, Phantom Hall, yeah, you're correct. Um, what's her connection with America? Well, she went out there, she's a Puritan, went out there in the 1600s, a descendants, um, are absolutely unbelievable. A gr seventh and eighth great grandsons are the two Bush presidents of America. Yeah. You know, so they're finding that fascinating. I find that fascinating. Yeah. So, you know, the input, input we've got over there in America. It's not only that, there's another woman who was her aunt who went out with her. Her name was Elizabeth Reed. 
she married a Winthrop. So she was Elizabeth Winthrop when she got out there out in uh, Rhode Island. Out there, there's a small village, town maybe, called Whitford, named after her. Of course. Because she lived in yeah. England. Heard of it. You know, that's <laughs> right. It's named after her. Wow. So, you know, it's, it's, so that connection as well. Mm. Forgetting about, obviously, you know, current individuals, you know, um, uh, one of our, um, what's his name, uh, Dave, who's just come back from Berlin, Depeche Mode out there. Course, He's a big yeah. Depeche Mode fan. He knows him very well. Went to school with them locally in Langdon, obviously. <laughs> and, um, you know, and that's a modern one. What well, they're one of their greatest export, if I if if I'm correct anyway. Mm. Um, and, and but there isn't anything up in the Bazon area that really depicts Depeche Mode. So we are actually working with council. Come on, we should have some interpretation board somewhere. Yes, Let's tell people good. about them. I know people know them, and of course there's visits that come over all the time from Germany and America. People want to know, and they float around. And this is what our colleague Davis and then when they come over from Germany, they say. But there's anything there. Where can we go? Mm. It's like they're depicting Depeche Mode. It's amazing. So finding out a little bit more about or for us anyway, our borough's history, it's not. It doesn't just. It's not just localized. It ends up becoming like a global thing when you find out that mm, people moved out mm. elsewhere. They established mm. places. They did loads of different mm. things. Mm. It's, it's fascinating. But just by looking at your history, mm. how much more. Mm. Ocean it becomes. So, so, Joe, is that something similar for you in terms of why you think it, it's important for people to yeah, know about it? I think, I mean, one of the reasons that led me into it was the num because we're all new people coming into the town at the same time. Um, so many people were saying, Basildon hasn't got any history, it only started in 1949. And I think that's what spurred me on to try and find out more. And it's one of the things in uh, school children today will say to you, Oh, yeah, but Basildon hasn't got any history. It's a new town. Therefore, I want to educate people, you could say, in the fact that, yes, we have got a history and it goes back a long way. Mm. You know, it's, it may not be as exciting as London's history, but as Ken has just said, we have got some very interesting things that people just don't know about. Mm. You know? Yeah, I have to say a point on that. Um, it goes back a long, long way, but the area or the period that people are tend to be interested in, as we, we mentioned earlier, is the Plotland era. Yes, you know right. why, why? Why did the new town come here in the Plotland era? You know, and we were given talks at schools and and well, a number of different groups on the Plotland era, um, and that's only fairly modern. But of course, it's just in the minds of a few people still, because even they had grandparents that lived through it. Um, or, or, or they, as children, they might have lived through it even. You know, young children who may be in their 70s or 80s now. But um, so even, even that alone, you know, um, is, I think it's a tremendous area because Plotlands, in fact, was all over the country, type of Plotland development. But the Pitsy to Landon area was the greatest density in, in the country. So that's why it's, you know, um, so well known, shall we say, well, well, the era is well known in this area. You know, it's well known to people, rather. That's but fascinating. And and so, if people were to come to the Green Centre, there is so much to see here, <laughs> and there's still more coming in all the time. We were uh, saying uh, this morning when we when I came in that people have just dropped off some massive old books, encyclopedias. So people are start donating things, bringing stuff in. That we used to have a look at, maybe display. Uh, I, for me, anyway, I'm fascinated. We've got some. Uh, World War One era bits and bobs downstairs, um, some some stuff from thousands of years ago, some fossils and whatnot that you wouldn't, you just don't associate with this area. Mm. Um, so people ought to come down and try out the Green Centre and have a look. Well, it's, I'm, I'm pleased you mentioned that with people, stuff being, you know, um, donated to us. In the last three or four weeks, we have had two lots of donations, main donations, really from the council. The first one, which we've got on display, well, we've got both of them on display. One is the Queen's Commemoration Book, which is signed over at the Tower Centre, um, or in, in the Tower Centre itself, um, in Towngate, getting Centre and Towngate mixed up. And that book is here on display. Um, and then a few years ago, we had the Second World War Military War Diary. And with the council, we had that on display in a cabinet, which the council had made up 
in Tailgate, but he got tucked away upstairs and nobody really ever saw it. And it's taken us years to persuade them. <laughs> we now got it over here. And I give full marks to the mayor and uh, his secretary for that. And we've got that on display here, um, which that's, that's two major displays. And if you come in, as you walk in um, through the door, you come in the display area, you'll see a big Union Jack flag there. Mm. And there it is. Mm. Then, uh, and, um, and, and then the latest set of information, which we are slowly beginning to push out through Facebook, aren't we, Joe, is that um, one of our volunteers' brother is quite an artist. And we must have something like, in watercolours, we must have... A thousand, two thousand pr uh, paintings in watercolours, and we've shown them to various people who are in the art world and say they're very good. And um, yeah. what's his name? Alan Jagger, who lives a Langdon boy, by the way. <laughs> Just to finish off, then, so you, you, you mentioned sort of how there's little booklets that could be hidden away and it's just prizing these things out. See, so when it comes to history, we think of it being in the past. It's not necessarily a present thing. Um, but coming here and being part of Buzz and Heritage brings it into the present. Um, Joe, if people are, have watched this and they're like, oh, Joe, I want to have a little look at that. We'll give it a go. How can people get involved in Buzz and Heritage? Well, we are very willing to take more volunteers. This year, we've had 10 new volunteers. It's really gone up. They are working wonderfully. Um, when, I, when they come, the first thing I ask them is, what particularly are you interested in? Because I'd much rather than research something they're interested in, I get more out of them that way, um, <laughs> than if I say, well, look, would you do education? And they're not interested, they won't do anything. But they're all given the chance to research what they want to do. And one of the things you'll notice when you first come through our front door is we have a massive collection of pamphlets. And these are all pamphlets that our volunteers, who when they came, would never have thought that they could write. <laughs> oh, no, I couldn't do that. But they've written these pamphlets on their researchers, and the uh, pamphlets are being collected by people who are on so many different subjects. So uh, that's what I would like. I would like more volunteers, or I'd like people just to come along and see what we've got and join Basildon Heritage mm. as a member. And we're on social media, aren't we? We're on Facebook. We're on Facebook and we also have a website. Okay, and we'll have links to those in the description so people can check them out if they're interested at all. Well, um, thank you very much for giving us your time today, both of you. I really do appreciate you taking the time to sit down with me and just talk a bit more about Basildon Heritage. Um, for me, when I first met you guys and saw this place properly for the first time, as a history buff myself, <laughs> I found it fascinating and I just absolutely love that we get to have conversations about history. So thank you very much, guys. You're welcome. Thank you. it. welcome. And thank you very much for watching. If you have any suggestions for people you'd like us to talk to, um, please do let us know in the comments below. Thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next one.